So how did you start telling jokes? My family always told jokes. Even though it was the Depression and they'd lost all their money and it was stolen by the bank, uh, they, lo they always told jokes. So I started out in life with a good collection. <laughs> I was born in the state of Maine in Aroostook County, 18 miles from the Canadian border, 40 degrees below zero every night in the winter. My father owned quite a, a chain of barber shops and then came the crash in 1928 and he lost everything he had. If you had money in the bank in 1928, you'd go to the bank to get it. It wasn't there. The bank door was locked. It was very bad, very tough, the Depression. But uh, my mother and father were valiant and they really brought it through for four kids, how they ever did it, and fed four kids, but they did. I was the president of the senior class because I told such good jokes in the junior class. And I won the presidency by popular vote, by a 60% plurality, because they liked the jokes. And it was a whole joke on the school, because this was a very uh, sophisticated school, and all of their people went to Yale, Harvard, Mount Holyoke, Smith, all the Ivy League. So it was a great shock to the stuffy principal when I was elected president of this prestigious class of 1946. I want you to sit down and write your biography, your autobiography. What happened the decade that you were born and what happened the next decade. But then, and writing is great, because all these things are going to pass when you pass. So then I said, well, that's dumb. Put it on audio tape. So, we started audio taping it. And I think it's up to as far as 1956, which were very big years. Very big years. And I said, that's dumb. Put it on videotape. You know, why you go two, three generations back as far as technology? Put it on videotape. And that's what I'm doing. In fact, I finished it. But I've got to go back and... Uh, play these on videotape. In other words, I sit down at a desk and play these on a videotape player. Excuse me, an audio tape player. And uh, then get the whole story. Progress toward goals is evident. You may not have lost the 10 pounds that you desired to lose before summer, but did you lose 2 pounds or 5 pounds? That's progress in the right direction. You may have missed a few days of reading your Bible, but did you read it 20 days last month? That's progress. God has never been in a hurry. Jesus lived 30 long years on the earth before beginning his active public ministry. Was Jesus right on schedule? Was he fulfilling God's precise timetable? Yes. Few things worth attaining can be accomplished in a day. What matters is the slow, steadfast, obedient pursuit of the goals to which God calls you. He is as concerned about your ongoing faithfulness, discipline, faith, obedience, and reliance upon Him as He is about your accomplishing the goals He helps you to establish. I encourage you to have the goal of successfully maintaining or managing the blessings that God sends your way. We each must be able to take responsibility for the goals we reach and for the blessings we receive. It takes just as much wisdom and diligence to attain a goal as it does to maintain a goal. Pursuing God's goals for your life. God deals in terms of what and who and how. How you reach your goals is critical to being successful not only in attaining the goals that God has helped you set, but in developing the character that God wants you to develop in the process. The principles for how to reach your God-given goals can be found in the story of David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. I want to explore that story in depth with you. The Philistines in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And, and ma and majorly it is, are you living your life, as we've said so many times, are you living your life according to the goals that God wants you to accomplish? Are you living that life? And are you have the goals that God wants you to have? 
Are your goals uh, giving you a spiritual life? Are they helping you that way, or are they just these ephemeral goals, such as making money and getting a promotion and living in a big house? This is the book that I love. It's all about the, uh, the first chapter was about Lao Tzu, 600 B.C. China, how you live life and get with the rhythm and you don't strive and you don't have a lot of desires and you just let it flow. You take it. It's very, very nice. And it's, it's amazing because the same thing that was told to Lao Tzu in the year 600 B.C. is the same thing that I heard and wrote down in 1968 in the book called Be Perfect. If you back up a little bit, I'll show you the Be Perfect book. What, I got a doggy? I got a doggy looking in the drawer? She knows when I'm talking to her. Here it is. It's, ex it's exactly the same approach to life. Isn't it interesting how the voice comes down? And if you hear anything from up above, I wish that you would tell me. But these pages are plastic. And this is what they look like. Unfortunately, I got this too close to the light and it melted. Okay. Uh, but this is what a page looks like. And as they say, they're all plastic. Cheerfulness. Success. Fulfillment, precision, gladness, quiet, composure, success, answers, being valued, effectiveness, strength, knowing God, control, abundance, See how much like Lao Tzu that is. Maturity. Polish. Poise. Dissolving of all bad habits. Dissolving of deficiencies as of knowledge, for example. Being loved by everybody. Confidence. Serenity, being orderly, never lying, stealing, or cheating, never stealing time from God, that is, from loving. God, thank you for the churches. People go there and all they do is talk about you. And they praise you and they recognize this beautiful world that you have created and that you keep it in operation and in maintenance. The sun doesn't fall down to the earth. It's there the next morning. The moon comes up once a month and it's so beautiful. Lord, hear our prayers and come to us, bringing light into the darkness of our hearts. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Music is oh, very nice. You. And I like the way you enjoy it so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is, this is, yeah, have a good time. Yeah, that's, I like that. Yeah. Did you hear about the, uh, the newspaper reporter asked the pianist, uh, why did you choose to play Beethoven's fourth piano concerto? And the pianist <laughs> said, well, 
That's what the orchestra was playing. Oh. <laughs> it was good to have you here. Oh, I love it. I love it. I think you do wonderful things. Yeah. yeah. And thanks for time. thanks for all that you do. It's a group effort. Yeah. See ya. Uh, this, okay, guess what this is? This is you, see? This is you, and this is God looking at you. beautiful shows for you for next month of okay. November. You got any to return to me? No, no, let me check. Oh, okay. That's four shows. That's their letter that they want you to hand in each time. That's two shows and so on, up to 20. These are the October events to be cable cast in November. 2009 Anno Domini. All of Long Island, the five boroughs of New York City, uh, all of Westchester County, all of Dutchess County, and Putnam County. Putnam County is between Westchester and Dutchess. And, uh, and Columbia County is very well covered. And uh, two in New Jersey, Trenton, Comcast, and uh, Cablevision, Bergen County. Uh, Springfield, Massachusetts, Manchester, New Hampshire, Houston, Texas, uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh, Los Alamos, New Mexico, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Buffalo, New York, Albany, New York. Oh, the big one is DC TV. Public access in the District of Columbia. These are returns from my TV stations. Many viewers are in there. Uh, and I'll, those will all be gone. You come back uh, in four days, every one of those will be used up and gone out to a TV station again. Folks, you know what this is? This is one mailing of a chat with Glendora probably for some month. Well, it would tell you right down here. It's way up there in the date. But this is the postage on it. And did you want to look at it, folks? Here's the postage on it. $100, 20 cents to mail out a chat with Glendora. Now, that's probably another question you have. Why not only do you spend your time mm -hmm. and your ergs of energy, but why do you spend so much money? And this is only mailing. Then you have to buy videotapes. Now it's DVDs. And then you have to buy camcorders that you wear out. It's played from the mini DV. It goes into this, this one right here. This is the bottom DVD. And then it comes out of the bottom DVD and goes into the character generator. Out of the character generator, up to this DVD, up to this DVD, up to this DVD, up to this DVD, and up to this DVD. And I can't get these two to give a picture. Hmm. And I was wondering if you could help me, but you don't have time, I don't think now. Anyway, it goes from this DVD over to the bottom, VHS, the Sanyo, up to the next VHS, so forth, so forth, and so forth, so that I can make, when the whole thing is operating, I can make 15 dubs at the same time. Well, I have to, if it's going to 60 TV stations. I'm working on this right now. Uh, tomorrow, I'll start wrapping them. This is the first 15 TV stations for the whole month of January. Some are VHS and some are uh, so, uh, 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 discs. That's for the first week of January. This is for the second week of January. And then over there, if you would look, you'll see the third week of January right here. I should point to it. And this is the fourth week of January. Those are done. 
This is another 15 TV stations started up. These over here, Vicki, are quads. There are four half hours on each one of these tapes. I have TV stations who will play a chat with Glendora for two hours. And so, and then there's the internet copy, and then my local TV station, which plays a chat with Glendora two hours every night, Monday through Friday. Last month, November, 44 half-hour TV shows, and it took 91 hours. But that's over. This month, there's only 16 editions. And I'm already up almost to wrapping them. Uh, Andrew and I are going to go into the third week of the group four. And then we'll go into the fifth week, and that will be it for the dubbing. You know, you say you dub around. Well, we do. We dub around all day. And then comes the wrapping. And then it goes to the post office. Thank you for the United States Post Office Service. Postal Service. Folks, I want to tell you about... Uh, an allergy? When I was on WRGB Schenectady, the great big General Electric broadcast TV station, uh, I had a children's show. And as you know, and uh, I would take, a, we had a treasure chest, it was a ship, and we'd take a name out of the treasure chest and that would tell us who, which child was going to be on TV in the next week or so. Well, Jimmy Talbot was 10 years old and he sent in 100 postcards so that he would be sure. And he got selected and he came down and from that moment on to the rest of his life right now today, he was fascinated by TV. And he grew up and, and made a career fair. of it. And, and 60 years later, no, see, he's 61. He was 10 years old then. 50 years later, I hear from Jimmy Talbot. He's gone out to Hollywood. He's made himself a career in filmmaking. And he came to see me. We spent the whole day together. And then he came back on Sunday, and he says, the reason I came back to see you on Sunday is that I bought you a TV set. And this is the one he bought. And I'm telling you, this is one grand TV set. Kids watch TV and they see junk. And this was something good on TV to help them decide what kind of a career they wanted to prepare for. First of all, um, you could go to a video store and buy Video Fashion Monthly. That's right, and just that, just the way you'd buy a fashion magazine. Yeah, and you take it home and play it on your... I think that's terrific. What mm -hmm. a great idea. Now, tell us what's in the videotapes, usually. Well, think of this as a Vogue or a Harper's Bazaar, yeah. an L magazine, except not being on print, it's on a videotape. And all in color. Absolutely, and you can see the front of the dress, and you can see the back of the dress oh, as, they, as they spin. Terrific. Uh, <laughs> hey, MIT, then PhD at the University of Chicago. You got a PhD, mm -hmm. and you're Dr. Nicholas Chern. So I spent uh, a little while with the Wall Street Journal, then I worked for a small town paper in California. Later, I worked for. A plain dealer in Cleveland, oh, and eventually, and, well known and, respected right. and, and eventually ended up back at uh, the Wall Street Journal in New York. Okay. I don't know why he's fading in and out. I had this all rehearsed for you before you came. The only. Oh no! What's going on? Oh, okay. Uh, maybe it's, it's a motorcycle this. season. They're selling fast. Don't this be is left my out. Husband's voice. He's a motorcycle professional that formerly nice Honda next to I-95 exit 23 in Fairfield. Fairfield, Connecticut. Okay, we're going to uh, search for. So you, forward. you and Franklin worked on these together. Yes, we worked on everything together. We did everything together. Durable insulation, fiberglass roofing, storm windows and doors. Thermal replacement windows, seamless gutters, and leaders. A&L Home Remodeling beautifies your house. Awnings, concrete, painting, and carpentry. <laughs> All work guaranteed in writing. Fully insured in workman's compensation. <laughs> Call 24 hours. Office and showroom. He was in Connecticut, too. Okay, well, we'll search for it.
God's running a complicated universe and there are jobs to do and God needs those jobs to be done and he made you with a special set of talents to do that one job that nobody else can do. So at 22 or earlier if you can, sit down and listen and say, what did you create me to do? I did that, I did it sincerely. The answer kept coming up, television. This was in 19... 52 or 3 when television was everything. People didn't go to the bathroom because they were watching television. They waited until the commercial. Uh, and all these uh, aerials sprung up on houses and made the whole landscape look funny. And um, so it kept coming up television. And what does it come up today? Television. So you will do that. You will get the answer. And it won't change how it's expressed and how it's developed will change. This is live in the TV studio. And on the videotape were four jokes that belong to you, and so we have to do those jokes over. But you need all the laughs that you can get. So here's the joke. Now this is the maternity hospital. And it's the way are you getting what you want for the 5,000th first show? And are you getting everything finally for this documentary of yours? which I think is in the third decade, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a chat with Glendora on YouTube. Did you know that you can watch a chat with Glendora on Google? <laughs> That's the one we saw today. It's cute, isn't it? show, A Chat with Glendora, has featured guests like Robert C. Wright, the president of NBC. Folks, please welcome the happiness lady, Glendora. Hi, Glendora. How are you? Pleasure to see you. Please, please have a seat. Where are you from, Glendora? Where does this show take place? Where can people see this? Oh, the Chat with Glendora? Yeah. You can see this on Manhattan Cable TV and Paragon Cable TV, and mm -hmm. you can also see it in uh, Westchester, where all the rich people live, uh -huh. United Artists Cable. And, and from where does it originate? Uh, well, of course, we originated at Mr. Wright's office and at Madeline Smithberg's dressing room and at uh, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> and the chairman of, of General Foods and the chairman of Nestle's. We originate at, in people's offices. Uh -huh. Some people come to our home, David. I see. Uh, the chairman of Colgate Palmolive Pete came to our home. How do you get all of these people? At 7 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I guess you were steamed, huh, that he was there so early? Well, the thing that interested me about him, David, was that he went to, he did his own marketing research and he went through all of our cupboards to see if we had any Colgate Palmolive products. Mm -hmm. And what, what did the uh, research turn up? Zero. Zero. He, he did a... <laughs> he didn't look under the sink cupboard where he would have found something. He didn't go into the bathroom cupboard. Yeah. He really would have found something. Now, tell me about the show. What is the format? When somebody tunes in, what do they see? Uh, they see uh, where were you born, where did you go to school, what were your jobs, uh, what is your present work like, mm -hmm. and what advice would you give a youngster to get started on such a career today? So it's an, an interview show primarily. Yes, that's what we uh, asked Mr. Wright. Yeah, a half hour show, is it? Yes, isn't it amazing what the public will stand? Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and is it on once a week? Yeah, oh yes. And how many years have you been on the air? Well, I've been on television 35 years, but that show's been on the air a year and three quarters. Mm -hmm. are, are you hoping that this particular show will, will maybe grow, perhaps expand, maybe get to uh, a network status or a local TV station or something? Well, I sort of doubt that. You don't think that that'll happen? No. Uh, let's, uh, well, you sure have the wardrobe for it, you know? Let's take a look. Show me some of the uh, the footage. This is Robert Wright, the president oh, now Lord, yeah. of NBC. You know, how did you get this guy to be on the show? Because we've asked him for years and years. Have you? Now. Oh yeah, and he won't he won't uh, come on the show. How did you get him? It must be my good looks, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Except I did talk to him over the phone, so that wouldn't have helped. Uh -huh. No, I figure this way, David. He's a nice man, and he does want to help the youth. And that's what this is all about. He wants about. to help the youth. Yeah, that's what this problem. Uh, have, we, this... have we heard anything about that? He wants to help the youth. <laughs> 
Did you hear anything about Robert Wright wanting to help the youth of this country? Robert C. Wright? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he wants to help the youth. I, I think he just... <laughs> I, I think he's just looking to balloon the stock prices. I think that's about all we're into here. No, he's a very nice a very man. Very nice man. All right, now let's take a look at a couple of seconds from his interview on uh, your show, okay? okay Is it, we have that here? Yeah. Robert uh, C. Wright and Glendora. Helping the youth. <laughs> It is a chat with Glendora. And then I, then we got uh, General Electric acquired RCA. And then I came over from General Electric to become the president of NBC. And that's how I got here. Oh, it's such an interesting career. And that's how you ended up in Fairfield, because I think uh, General Electric's table was centered in Fairfield, wasn't it? Yes, I actually never worked in Fairfield. Oh, you never did? No, no, I worked, uh, most recently my office was in Stamford, Connecticut, before I came here. Oh. Although I live in, I live in that area, but I, I didn't work I there. I see, yeah. This is Mr. Robert C. Wright, who is the president and chief executive officer of NBC. And he'll be back in just a second and tell you what his work is like to see if you'd like to aim for that as a career. And then he'll also give you some ideas how to get started in broadcasting in today's world. Yeah. It, it, it seems like you and he were dressed alike. <laughs> didn't, didn't he? You sort of had the same, same kind of look there. Now, uh, I don't want to linger on this, but how did General, Electric, uh, General Electric's acquisition of RCA, how, how did that ultimately help the youth of this country? It, what helped the youth was Mr. Wright telling how he got started because I he was at the same point. Yeah, he yeah. was at the same point in his development as the youth who watched the program. We hope are in there. So. I see. Uh, now tell me about your your personal recipe for happiness. You're you're known as oh, the, yeah, the happiness yeah, yeah. lady. Well, is I'll that what they you, say? No. <laughs> what do they call you? Glendora. Yeah. <laughs> And what did you say your name was? I'm Dave. I'll be the, <laughs> no. My last night. <laughs> you are a very good interviewer. Well, thank you. And I'm going to recommend you for a raise. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the, the recipe for happiness, David, is that there's one thing in this world that you can do better than anybody else. And if you will go by yourself, you will find out what that is. And you will do it, and you'll be happy. Now, if you don't do it, David, it's going to nag at you every second of your mm -hmm. life.